I think if people at a young age see a guy who may not be the tallest, you know, strongest, or fastest, but a guy who can really make a difference in whatever he's doing. What's up, Knicks fans? Ray B, sport performance, corrective exercise, and movement coach, back again for the Knicks wall. We've been in the lab cooking it up as of late with Jalen Brunson linked to the Knicks in free agency. I wanted to do my due diligence and dive into Jalen Brunson as a player. I've watched his Nova tape, I've watched his Dallas tape, and there's a lot of things there that I love about Jalen Brunson. There's also a couple things that I think he can do a little bit better. We're going to break Jalen Brunson down from a biomechanics standpoint and see what he can do to help the Knicks. I love Jalen Brunson, and it's pretty clear that the Knicks do too. Breaking NBA news, Jalen Brunson intends to sign a four-year deal with the Knicks worth uh, a little over $100 million, somewhere between 105 and 110, according to reports, as first reported by The Athletic. After several years of a revolving door of players at point guard, the Knicks finally feel like they found their guy. He's turning 26 by the time the season rolls around, and at 6'1", 190 pounds, he's a bit undersized for a point guard. Just make sure you don't tell him that. To add to that... Jason Kidd told us that he's told Luca as Brunson bullies his way to the bucket. One of the things that stood out to me right away about Brunson that I loved was his knee stability. Brunson loves that stop and go. When you hit the brakes that often, you need to have good knee mechanics and stability. And if you don't, trouble is going to find that knee. Watch how he gets into this pivot here. And that knee stability translates right over to Brunson's jump shot. Now, sometimes you'll see a player's knees cave in before they go up and shoot, and that leads to a suboptimal energy transfer. And what that means is that you're not going to get the right arc, you're not going to get the right lift, and it's potentially going to leave you liable to ankle and knee injuries down the line. When I spoke to NBA shooting coach Dave Love, he told me two of the most important things that a player could have in their jump shot is balance and arc. And Jalen has both of those. When you have that arc like Jalen has, he's able to go up over guys like Gobert, Vucevic, Jokic. He's got arc. That's not something we have to worry about. And that is why his knee stability translates. First quarter. Nice pull up. Yeah, up. Something else that I love about Jalen Brunson is his ability to absorb and distribute force. It's fantastic. His posture is always great. You never really see him in a hunched over position. You always see him land knees, feet, and hips aligned, which is great. His hips rotate over when he runs, so he's not running like Robocop. And the way that he distributes force when he's driving is great because he's not pressurizing the inside ball of his foot, nor is he pressurizing the ball of his foot when he's pivoting. Pivoting off of the fourth and fifth toe is something that you're really going to want to do, and it's something that Brunson does, which is why when I was looking for his injury history of his lower body, I couldn't really find anything. That's great news. Now here's the thing about being a relatively smaller guard, and that's that sometimes when you're driving through the lane as hard and fast as Jalen does, you're going to have to pull that ripcord like Goose and Topka. Now, when you land on the floor like that, it's hardwood. You're just opening yourself up to potential injuries, like a wrist injury, an elbow injury, or if you remember how Cam Reddish went down last year and hurt his shoulder. It's just, we can eliminate that altogether by trying to stay on our feet after finishing at the rim. That's what I would love to see from him. And yeah, that is a little thing. It's a little nitpicky, and so is me wishing that he wouldn't land on one foot on his faders or land sideways on his step backs but his mechanics seem sound enough for that not to be a huge issue down the road for him. So with his mechanics, barring some freak injury, I think we could expect to see Jalen play between 60 and 70 something games this season, and that's just gonna benefit everybody. And yeah, there's been a lot of talk about how much Jalen's been getting paid and how big that contract is, but you're not cashing the checks. The Knicks finally have a point guard. And he's going to be one who's going to be able to stay on the court. His mechanics are great. He's going to be able to facilitate, and that's going to make everybody better. And that's something I'm looking forward to seeing, and I know a lot of Knicks fans are too. For the Knicks wall, I'm Ray B, and remember, when you move better, you feel better.